Lewis. Our money man, Martin Lewis, is live with us now and we will get straight to it, if that's all right, Martin, because, as always, we have had lots of questions for you this morning. Sure. Um, we will start with Joe. Hi, Joe. Are you there? Hello, Joe. Hello, can you hear me? Hello, Hi, we've got you, Joe. We've got you. What Hi. is your question Hi, for Martin? Hi, good morning, Gore. Good morning, Martin. Um, what it is, I've got a 22 year old son. He already has a help to buy ISA with a full amount in. Um, what we would like to know is would he be better now with the house price increase? He, he wants to buy a, a house outside of London, by the way. Um, if he would be better moving to a lifetime ISA? Wow, that is a complicated question. OK, so the Help to Buy ISA is the predecessor of the Lifetime ISA. Both give you a 25% bonus on what you put in when you use it to buying a qualifying first house. Uh, I think the reason you're asking me the question is you can only buy a house up to £250,000 in the Help to Buy ISA. You can buy one up to £450,000 in the Lifetime ISA in London. They're both four fifty thousand. Uh, so my big question for you, the problem is it would take you three years to move all that money across. So is he likely to buy a house that costs over £250,000? Possibly, yes. He has got a partner. Um, so I was wondering as well if he would be able to use his help to buy with her help to buy as well at the same time. So possibly increasing yeah, the amount no over £250,000. Yeah. yeah, no, that doesn't... Sorry, no, that let You can both have a help to buy ISA and you can both use it together on the same property as long as you're first-time buyers, but the cap is still a property worth up to £250,000 on a help to buy ISA. The fact is, two of you doesn't change that at all. So, look, what would I, what would I suggest? I mean, there are problems with the help to buy ISA. The pro two pro main problems with the help to buy ISA, you have to have it open a year before you can get the bonus. So, sorry, with the lifetime ISA, you have to have it open a year before you can get the bonus. And if you take money out of the lifetime ISA, for anything other than buying your first time qualifying property or retirement age 60, then you effectively pay a penalty of 6.25%. Now, I think that's very unfair with the way house prices have changed. I actually contacted the Chancellor yesterday to ask him to change that in the autumn statement that's coming in a couple of weeks, but we're not talking about that right now. So what I would probably do is this. Oh, it's, it's just very difficult. Because of the risk, the problem is if you try and play both at the same time so you can choose which one's best, if you don't end up using the lifetime ISA, you're going to pay a penalty. So how? let me ask one more question. When does he think he'll be buying? I'm hoping sooner rather than later, <laughs> um, but probably not for about three years. Well, three years, then he's got time to move the money across and then he'll still get the bonus. So if he's definitely going to buy and it's definitely going to be over a year's time and it's definitely going to be over 450 or, or over 250 and it's likely to be, then to start to move that money from the help to buy ISA to the lifetime ISA is probably your best bet um, because you will still be able to get the bonus on the lifetime ISA and you wouldn't get the bonus on the help to buy ISA if you buy a property over £250,000. Do we go and do some reading about the lifetime ISA, though. And just a message for anybody out there. If you are a want-to-be first-time buyer between the ages of 18 and 39, maybe your kids are, then if you haven't got a help to buy ISA or a lifetime ISA, I would go and open a lifetime ISA now and put a quid in it. Why a quid? Because, as I said before, it needs to be open for a year before you can get the bonus. So if you open one with a quid in now, even if it's not right for you and you don't use it later, well, the most you'd lose, you'd lose 6p. You can cope with 6p. But if it is right for you, then you've started the clock going now. And if you decided to buy later, you could suddenly put up to £4,000 in and you get a £1,000 bonus immediately because you've had it open for longer than a year. So just a quick tip for anyone, get a quid in a lifetime ISA if you're a first-time buyer aged between 18 and 39. So you've at least got the facility available quicker. Nice one. Okay. Well, I like the fact much. that a lifetime ISA is called a Lisa. I I that's fun. I like that. Uh, Mark, we're going to belt through a few of these. Uh, this yes. is from another I, I, Joe. I call it a Lisa, actually. <laughs> yeah, well, I work on the Lisa right here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I always right with this. Stuff. Lisa Minnelli. <laughs> <laughs> this is from Joe. I'm 20 years old. I went to university for one year before I decided to leave, which I now have to pay that loan back. I'm now looking at taking a separate private course where I'll have to get a loan for £8,500. To what degree will having two separate loans affect me in the future regarding credit scores and mortgages? Well, as I often say, the, the official student loan that you took for your one-year course works more like a tax than it does a loan. You only repay it once you're earning enough. It does not go on your credit file. 
Um, uh, so the way that the, the student loan is treated is a reduction in your disposable income if you're earning over the threshold, assuming you're in England and, and you're a recent graduate, it'll, that'll be over around £27,000. So if you're applying for a mortgage, they would look and simply say, well, it's a bit like you're paying 9% extra tax on any earnings above £27,000. Your other loan, the private loan, I presume is more like a normal loan, in which case that will go on your credit form. It will look like you've got out, you've got uh, outstanding debt. And so then when any other lender is looking at your debt utilisation, it will reduce it. I mean, I'm being relatively technical describing the fact one reduces your disposable income, the other is an outstanding debt. Having two loans clearly means you'll have more debt than otherwise. And when other lenders come to look at you, you are slightly less attractive for having both. There is no way around that. That's, that's how the system works. The more debt you've got, the less attractive you are to others. Will it stop you getting a mortgage if you've got a decent income? No, but it could possibly reduce the amount of mortgage that you can get. OK, OK, thank you very much. Emma says, how can I improve my credit score? I've got a credit, credit score of 928 on Experian, but of late I've been getting refused credit due to an increase in overdraft. Um, I also got refused a mortgage when I was renewing it this year due to being made redundant whilst on maternity leave. I've never had a bad credit rating before. I always pay off everything in full. What can I do to improve it? Well, look, we, we just have to get away from being hung up too much about credit scores. You do not have a credit score in the UK. The one that you're given by the credit reference agencies is that just their indication of a loose guide to what... Uh, a typical company might look at you if it was only looking at your credit history. Now, the fact there are three different credit reference agencies and they, they don't all score the same shows you you don't have a credit score. So don't get too hung up about small movements on that. And the big thing everybody forgets is your credit score doesn't include the single most important factor that is looked at when you apply for any form of credit, your income. Let's, be, let's make this be, be extreme on this. If you had no income and a perfect credit score and you wanted a loan, you're almost certainly not going to get it because you can't pay it back. So when you tell me you've been rejected, what you haven't told me is the crucial factor. You know, you talked about being made redundant. Well, if you've been re made redundant and you don't have a job and you don't have income, even with a great credit score, it is, of course, going to make getting credit much more difficult. Mm -hmm. So it, th there's no real way to finagle the system. A 9 to 8, uh, uh, assuming that you're on the 999 system, is a pretty good credit score. But this could equally be about the affordability score that they do based on your income. And that could be why you're being, um, why you're being rejected. So income, keep, don't over apply. Make sure you get all your credit reference files from the three different agencies. Um, download them, go through line by line just to check there are no errors, such as you've moved house and you've got accounts that are still listed at your old address. Things like that can get you knocked down due to fraud scoring. Go through all of that. But remember, credit scoring is only one half of this. The other half is affordability scoring, which is far more about your income. OK. Thanks, Martin. Thanks so much. Thank Thanks for your advice, much. as always. Take care of yourself. Cheerio. See you soon. Thanks, Martin.